Hey, Dr. C here with you. Got a really good question about iodine and breast cancer. Here's the gist of it. The writer was concerned. She felt that I made a good case about iodine being good to minimize and keep to a controlled level to help her thyroid, but she was concerned about her breast health. And she had seen arguments stating that low iodine was a risk for breast cancer. And she was afraid that if she helped her thyroid, she might be causing other problems. So yeah, here's the answer for that one. Now, the connection between iodine and breast health comes from a couple of factors. We see that iodine does build up in a few parts of the body besides the thyroid. Uh, one category is the breasts. There is more iodine in female breast tissue than there is in other parts of the body with the exception of the thyroid. There's also some in the salivary glands and also some in the male prostate. And the breast tissue, our best assessment is that this one's straightforward. It's there because breast milk needs to have iodine. And unlike other nutrients, iodine requires concentration. So magnesium, B12, vitamin C, the amount in your bloodstream ends up being the amount that your body needs in the tissues. But iodine in the thyroid is not the same. You need more in your thyroid than your bloodstream regularly provides. So therefore you concentrate it. And that's why iodine does goofy things and the dosing ranges are so exacting because you can concentrate too much. So we also have a concentrator in the breast tissue because breast milk would need to have iodine and the blood would not be adequate for that. So the same compound, the sodium iodine symporter, the, trans, the concentrating mechanism is also found in breast tissue. Breast tissue also concentrates iodine so that milk can have adequate amounts of iodine. Now, why is that in prostate tissue? It's not completely known, but there are thoughts that the body is conservative in a lot of ways. It uses the same things for multiple purposes. You know, guys have nipples. Guys don't lactate. We don't actually need them. <laughs> but we think that male prostate tissue may have some overlap with development of breast tissue, that there may be some similar cell origins. The prostate creates fluid, which is used for food for the semen, and that fluid creation process may be kind of like the creation process of breast milk, there may be some cellular redundancy. And we also see that many things that affect the risk of prostate cancer affect the risk of breast cancer and vice versa. So that's one theory as to why it's in the prostate. In the salivary tissue, not known. It may be just similar secretory cells again, or there may be some antimicrobial purposes, but there are just trace amounts found in the saliva. But in the breast, it's there for nourishment, for their iodine for the, the baby in breast milk. So yeah, so that's why iodine is in breast tissue. Does that mean you need a lot of it there? And what happens if you're higher and lower in iodine? How does that play out for your breast health? Well, a lot of these theories came from a gentleman who noticed that there were studies showing that high oral doses of iodine did lower symptoms of fibrocystic breast disease. And he made an argument that fibrocystic breast disease was caused by iodine deficiency. And what we've since learned is that it's a little different. So if you take a mega dose of iodine, you slow down your thyroid's absorption of iodine. It doesn't pump it in as hard. And in fact, if you get a lot, you can even shut things off completely for a period of time. We now know the same thing occurs because breast tissue has the same concentrator. So if you get a lot of iodine, you also stop your breast tissue from concentrating iodine. It doesn't have to try as hard. And what happens is by not concentrating it, by turning off the sodium iodide transporter, you end up having a uh, like a diuretic effect. You cause less fluid to build up in the breast tissue. So a high dose iodine shuts down this transporter and you take the extra fluid off of fibrocystic breast disease, which is not to say that low iodine causes fibrocystic breast disease, but a mega dose of iodine can temporarily squeeze some fluid out of the congested cells. Uh, almost a drug-like effect, not so much a nutritional effect. In the same way, iodine on the skin could help treat a skin infection, even if iodine deficiency didn't cause the infection. You could have it caused by snagging a thorn on your skin. So that was the confusion there. But the question is, well, what do we see about populations and breast cancer and iodine? How do they play out? Well, the first approximation was a, an observation that populations consuming high amounts of iodine, specifically the Japanese, had lower rates of breast cancer. And a plausible enough thought was, well, maybe there's some protective effect. Further analysis showed that 
there's many other factors in the traditional Japanese diet that probably had a larger effect and were more relevant. So one factor is just lower body weight, you know, lower total body mass index. Other factors include soy intake, also green tea intake, seafood intake, physical activity. These are all things that are thought to be more relevant to breast cancer risk than iodine. And we can go even deeper. There have been studies done looking at populations that consume varying amounts of iodine and how breast cancer risk manifests for those low in iodine against those who are high in iodine. I've got an image I'll pop up for you that shows the findings of some data like that. So here are iodine levels, urinary iodine levels in patients that had breast cancer and in controls that did not. And how many in these various groups happen to be in the high, low, or normal iodine levels. Now, if iodine were protective, what you should see is the highest iodine levels course being present in those that did not have breast cancer and the lowest iodine levels being present in those who did. However, what we see is a very strong tendency towards the exact opposite. The rate of those highest in iodine were eightfold, eight times more common in those with breast cancer than similar controls who did not. And the, the rates of being lowest in iodine were three times higher in those who did not have breast cancer than in those who did. So if there is a dosage-related effect of iodine in breast cancer, it's not a positive one. Those who had the highest level of iodine had the highest risk of having breast cancer, not the opposite. And in fact, there is some research being done on this mechanism as a way to treat breast cancer. So because breast cells may concentrate iodine, there's some experimental work being done on seeing whether or not radioactive iodine can be used to kill breast cancer. Right now, radioactive iodine is used to kill thyroid cells when the gland is overactive or when the gland is cancerous, but because the thyroid concentrates radioactive iodine more than other parts of the body. But in the near future, that also may be used against breast cancer. So, so yes, there are links between iodine and breast cancer, but not in the way that you may have heard. There were theories about iodine being important and protective for breast tissue based upon the idea of iodine lowering fibrocystic breast disease symptoms, but now we know that iodine is just a nonspecific diuretic in high doses. It's not treating an iodine deficiency. It's not that the breasts need these massive amounts. And we also know that populations that have higher levels of iodine have higher rates of breast cancer, not the opposite. So to the listener who wrote in, you are not only is it okay in terms of not raising breast cancer risk by being lower in iodine, the best data today tells us that if anything, you will be lowering your risk. So that's generally the case. Things that are good for part of your body are not really bad for other parts of your body. And the same thing holds true here. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.